Just think about it. Can you all say something about it? Because I have some, a new piece of information. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, then I will call upon you. I don't think I knew how to be in control, did you? You could call upon to put my you. microphone on. I beg you, I'm sorry. Come I on. can take direction. It's nice to have someone else figure out what's supposed to happen next because sometimes I skip things <laughs> I have by accident. I don't mean to. I have a good memory. Don't you worry. My favorite one is I can't remember. every once in a while I'll like change the worship order yeah. and then I'll mess it up. And then, Who did that? Who changed that order? <laughs> oh, wait, I did that. And I oh. had a reason. <laughs> yes. Okay, now. Oh, good. It gives us fits sometimes. Downstairs? Get them up here and we'll start. Numbers game this morning. There were 24 people at Benton this morning. <laughs> I'm like, I, even knowing the folks who come in late, we're not getting there. <laughs> Usually we have two to seven more. You, uh-huh. Is your mic on? Almost all of it was in the last 24 hours. <laughs> I have a little bit of laryngitis today, but I'll... <laughs> Good morning to all of you, and welcome to the Winslow Congregational Church. And it's a growing, and the sun out, and so on. And before... I was going to just make some remarks that tomorrow, like uh, Maine and Massachusetts and Tennessee is kind of agreeing to the Patriots Day, and this came with the Concord, and they've, and it's officially passed in the Congress that it's the third Monday of April that we <coughs> observe it. Whether we observe any celebrations or just remember that our country has been defended nicely and it's, it is our members that have done that sort of thing. So just just as a thought. And by the way, I did read a, read a piece of something, and I have got it here, and I have to put it in that, that it was, oh, the first celebration of, as a federal holiday, was the four. And I know what 1894 was. It was the birth year of my mother and father. So I come from long, oh, and I remember 1894 so well. So be it. Just a little bit of fun. All right. Uh, memo right here. The first thing is that what is the difference between a flood watch and a flood warning? And I read what Pastor... Well, I should recap that. So oh, maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. It's got a good chance. We're keeping an eye on it. It's often issued further in advance. In advance. 
and you're watching, you are watching to see if a watch turns into a warning. If it turns into a warning, now you need to figure out if you need to do something about it. Now what I... God of grace and, and peace in Jesus Christ, you stand among us as a sign of healing, hope, and fill us with your Holy Spirit, so and life through Christ, our risen Savior. In Jesus Christ, who stands among us, we have seen the marks. scripture lesson is from 1 John 3 verses 1 through 3. To be called children of God and that is what we are. Reason the world does not know us is beloved we are God's children now. He is revealed we will be kids to come sit in the first row. But I was also designing this for the preschoolers who are usually here. <clears throat> So you can shout out your answers easily from the back row, okay? <laughs> mm. Oak tree. Bob. <laughs> An oak tree. What will I become? Yes, you may have started hearing them. I heard them two nights ago for the first time. I become. Close. It's a mountain lion cub. Now see, I was thinking the preschoolers might cat. But yes, we, we know because we've seen these things. But if you were not know that an acorn is going to be, that's quite a transformation. And our, our little passage, we know what's going to happen when we die. But we know that when Jesus died, he was resurrected and with Jesus now. But we know that we are like Jesus. And when we have faith in Jesus, we'll get transformed too. And we don't have to know what. So, which is, you may not know what you're going to do when you grow up exactly. Some of you may. He knew in sixth grade. Most of us, by the time we're seeing. So, we will transform, and we may transform multiple times in our lives. And God is with us in all of it. And now you get to read the rest of the scriptures. Thank you. The second reading is from Acts 3, verses 11 through 21, and then I'll go on to Luke 24. The scripture begins right after Peter and John, he had a crippled, crippled beggar in Jesus' name. So Act 3, while he clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Peter saw it, he addressed the people. Fellow Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Why do you stare at us? As we had made him walk. God of Abraham, the God of our ancestors, whom he handed over and rejected, though he had decided to release him, but you rejected the ask to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the all dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, has made this man strong him the perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, brothers and sisters, you acted in ignorance as that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to might be wiped out. So many times of refreshing, that is Jesus, who must maintain in hell his holy prophets. 
And the gospel lesson begins just after two disciples who met Jesus on the walk to um, Amos returned to Jerusalem in a hurry to tell the rest of the disciples what they had recognized, the Lord in his breaking of bread. Luke 24. Jesus, while they were talking about this, and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. And he said to them, Why are you frightened? Why hearts? Look at my hands and feet. See that it is death as the enemy when we're in, in our Easter messages a lot of the times. And we, one of the reasons we don't like to talk about resurrection is we have to talk about death, right? You don't have resurrection without death. And we don't want to talk about that, so we just sort of skip over and say, yeah, and when we die, we go to heaven and make it too simplified. So here's conscientious objector. I shall die, but that is all. I shall force out of the stall. I hear the clatter on the barn floor. He is in haste, children starving to death, versus in the street, stabbed in the mall, whatever it is that has caused them to die early, prematurely. So maybe, maybe when we look at this in light of Peter and John healing the crippled man so that he now has a fuller life. And imagine he's standing there while they're, we know later he keeps going around, he stays with the disciples, he becomes a disciple. <clears throat> we never know what the suggestion is that people for whom resurrection of life, the abundance of life, the diversity of life should be our goal so that we are part and parcel of God's work in the world and that work is to bring about not just in some die and go to heaven but here and now for us, for our neighbors, yes even for our enemies, yes even for the very earth itself. So we are challenged in this, these passages to say, okay, if we are a resurrection people, people who believe that life is possible out of death, <clears throat> how are we living? In what way are we living and what choices are we making to increase life, abundance, safety, justice, and clearly, that is something the world is in desperate need of. I kind of like that adversarial role with death. When we're talking for in a systems, just destruction, profit, or power. We get to make choices and say, you know what? Pulled out before. You know what? I can give up chocolate. Oh, so that it is that they use to harvest the chocolate. Oh, that's hard. I love chocolate. But is that a kind of a sacrifice that I can make? It's not going to affect my health. It's not going to affect my well-being. That's a fairly small sacrifice to make. Let's go even smaller. Something that huge impact. This time of year, there I've been hearing um, uh, on Facebook and I think even yeah, the radio. This time of year, right? Indians and things are coming out of the ground. And the turtles are crossing. So when you're driving someplace near a body of water right now, slow down a little bit, pay attention, and don't run over turtles. Guess what? You are, being a, you are choosing life. You're choosing to be a resurrection person. You can start that small. These little tiny things that we, or we can do bigger things. All in God's leading to know where we are being called 
to increase life in this world. Do that, we are participating with Jesus, with God, in bringing about the kingdom of heaven. And God's love pours into the world through our actions, through our choices. And we get to be part of it. We get to be witnesses to the resurrection in how we live. And that is the good news. I'll Normal gait. And bless her heart, she's handled all of the. She is 45 now, so time has come. But at the end of my opening. Oh, yes, yes. Life giving God. Giving God. We gather today. Help us to, to sit with that, trusting that all. And, th and through that trust, help us to live more fully into being resurrection people, people who support life, love and peace, prosperity, joy, the most vulnerable among always know which way to go, oh God, so whisper in our ears. Gently guide us on the path of compassion. Teach us and remind us of things that are important, like kindness. Does not have the last word, and we do not and when we do, we, who has the power, who, so much good, we would but open ourselves to it. We lift today a prayer of thanksgiving for Linda's cousin Christine, who is home safely from her, up a prayer of gratitude and joy for Joyce's granddaughter, who has come through surgery and we're grateful that we live in a time when this defect can be. Kindness is always a blessing. And today in this war-torn world, we lift up a prayer for peace on earth, for calm minds and measures not of anger, and bravado world would take a deep breath and make choices that increase peace and this earth. To bring these prayers to you because you did indeed give us your son Jesus Christ and so we pray